Jee, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, as I said earlier, that we are going to briefly or and generally discuss the term sociolinguistics, right? Is it's just an introductory class in online as well, unfortunately. Uh, and in the coming class, inshallah, we'll then, uh, in technical terms, we'll, we'll discuss the entire syllabus then, right? These are the, the uh, key terms which I just typed in front of you people a short while ago, right? Uh, sociolinguistics is somebody said, um, the what did you just say? Can you repeat it again? G, please. I hope I'm clearly audible to all. Am I audible? G, am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, fine. Right, somebody said a short while ago, um, language and society, right? Before we uh, discuss sociolinguistics, let's just have a look at a few other branches of linguistics, right? Uh, psycholinguistics, which you are already familiar with, uh, psych psycholingu if you look at the term psycholinguistics, so it's a blend of two terms, right? There are two terms, one is psychology, another is linguistics, right? And in simple words, we may say that psychology is the study of human mind, right? The study of human mind, the study of human psyche, and linguistics is the scientific study of language, right? Now, when we study language, when we study language in relation to human mind and become psycholinguistics. In the same way, we have got neurolinguistics, ne neurology, which is a blend of neurology and linguistics, right? Uh, neurology is the study of the structure and function of brain. The study of the structure and function of brain, remember. And linguistics is again the scientific study of language, right? So when we study language in relation to brain, it becomes, you see, uh, psycholinguistics. Right? In the same way, there are other branches of applied linguistics, like we have got uh, eco-linguistics nowadays, right? Computational linguistics is much old, or rather older as compared to um, eco-linguistics. Eco-linguistics is, you see, a blend of ecology, which is the study of um, environment and nature, and we have got then linguistics, right? So a blend of both becomes Ecolinguistics. Similarly, there is few linguistics nowadays, right? The most recent uh, branch of linguistics, uh, few linguistics, few is from theology, and linguistics is from linguistics, the standard scientific study of language. So, when we language, when we study language in relation to religion, it becomes few linguistics, right? Now, coming to just just like you see these other terms which we just discussed, I mean other branches of applied linguistics, we have got sociolinguistics as well, right? Socio is from society uh, or sociology, you may say, uh, sorry, not society, you may say sociology, right? Sociology is the study of society. And linguistics is the scientific study of language is, maybe we already know that. Now, what is sociolinguistics? By sociolinguistics, we, we may simply mean uh, the, you see, the study of, remember, I'm, I'm discussing these th things in general terms today, right? We will definitely discuss all these uh, notions and technical terminology in the coming class, inshallah, right? So, uh, sociolinguistics is the study of language in relation to society. The study of language in relation to society. Did you get it so far? Yes, yes sir. sir. Right. Remember, this is not an answer. I mean, uh, what is sociolinguistics and the answer is the study of language in relation to society. Remember, this is not an answer. Rather, it's the beginning of hundreds and thousands of questions regarding the field of sociolinguistics. Right? Hundreds and thousands of questions, believe you me. How, when we say that sociolinguistics is the study of language in relation to society, so what do we mean by that? 
like what sort of relationship or what sort of relationships may possibly be really established between language and society right on the one hand we have got uh, language sorry and then we have got society so how can we establish a relationship between these two right um the, 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 there is you may say a kind of dialectical relationship between the two a, a bi-directional relationship between the two the first one is that uh, society influences language right well the second one is that language influences society right society influences language and language influences society simply you may say society influences language and vice versa right so this is what the relationship between language and society is though some people disagree with these opinions some people believe that only society influences language and society doesn't influence language in return uh, similarly some other people believe that you see uh, like um, that they, they believe in you see the relationship of one on another only right like they, they believe in a unidirectional relationship between language and society then there are some people uh, who believe that there is no relationship at all just as we have got Nam Chomsky right uh, pure uh, like uh, 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 structuralists believe that it's all about structure and uh, that there is no relationship between language and society right then there are people who believe in you see this bi-directional relationship and which is what uh, we may also agree with but anyways in this uh, entire course in this semester we'll we'll be focusing on the first one only right uh, to some extent we will be taking into consideration the second one as well i mean influ the influence of language and society also but primarily we'll be dealing with the ways in which society influences language right the language which we use right so it, it leads us to a very simple and basic question right uh, we may say that uh, how does or you may say in what ways are you people with me yes sir. please keep on giving responses and keep on participating please right so, uh, so basically, basically society and language are interdependent on each other exactly that is the conclusion society and society and language are inter interdependent on simply they are interdependent right they, they are dependent on each other one influences the other and vice versa right exactly. now but how you will illustrate these two by giving a, an example yeah good. society influence language which influence society all right fine see the the first one society influences language we are going to discuss it in detail right but still uh, you, you you have asked for an example so uh, we, we have got different social factors right for example education social class age gender ethnicity race culture profession right social situation multiple uh, uh, social factors are there right and those 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 social factors actually influence the way we use language for example look at education so look at the, the language of educated people and if we compare it with the language of the uneducated people uh, we'll, we 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 may come to know about you see hundreds of differences between the language used by the educated people and by the uneducated people right so this is how society influences language i'm going to discuss it uh, in detail today the second one uh, how does language influence society so this is what we discuss in critical discourse analysis then like uh, 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 look at language discourses discourses shape society discourses shape society whatever we believe in right like our entire ideologies our religious ideologies our political ideologies our cultural ideologies right national ideologies all these ideologies are you see they are the product of language i mean they are the product of discourses when we were born we didn't know about any gender we didn't know about any ethnicity any nationality right like we were simply human beings but it was through the discourses which we got exposed to during our childhood and even till now those discourses you see 
shape our ideology in a certain way, in a particular way, right? The, those discourses actually told us that we were, uh, you see, either male or female, right? We had certain religion. Those discourses told us that we we belong to certain nation, to certain country, to certain state, and to certain ethnic and so social group, right? So this is how these uh, discourses or language, you see, language or discourse shapes society, right? But as I said, this is the concern of critical discourse analysis, then that how do discourses shape ideologies and uh, you see as a result, how do discourses shape society? You got a point? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Right. Sir, uh, may I say something? something? Uh, sure, sure, please. Sir, like we said that uh, literature uh, is a product of society. It comes out of society, but it affects society a lot. In the same way, language comes out of society, but it has yes. a huge impact on society. It, it does have a very huge impact on society, because whatever society is, that is the product of discourses, remember. Exactly. Society exactly. is the product of discourses. Yeah. Right? Okay. Fine. So, um, um, should we focus on the first one now? Or do you have any other question? I would appreciate yes. if there is any other question. No question. Right, right, right. So, uh, you see... Having said, having said that, sociolinguistics is the study of language in relation to society, and then having determined that, uh, in this semester, in sociolinguistics, our focus will be only on majority, you see, primarily on the influence of society over language, right? So, here is a simple question we may pose, that in what ways does society influence language? So what do you think? In what ways does society influence social language? Or does, does, does society influence language? Don't you think society is a kind of abstract notion? We need to bring it into a concrete form. Society is a something that is something very broad in kind of abstract concept, right? And what exists in society, what exists in society is, you see, a number of social factors. For example, we all have got, you see, uh, we, we, we belong to a certain social class, don't we? Yes, sir, we are. Right? We have got certain gender, we belong to a certain age, right? We belong to a certain profession. Uh, let, let me move it to the next page so that it may become easier for you people, right? Profession. Uh, what else do we have? What other social factors we are surrounded by? Come on. Don't we have geographical boundaries? What else? Come on. I want you people to participate a lot. Language contact, what else? What, what other social factors are there? G, please. Colors, mm. different colors. Mm, you may say race or ethnicity. Right, what else? Good, come on, I want you people to participate, please. I'm repeating it for the last time, right? What else do we have? And technology, technology factor. Mm, technology, maybe it may be a factor, but is he? A, a, it gave us a lot, lot of words. words and that way. Mm, of course, it does. Of course, it does. But you see, technology is actually a means of yeah. language contact and many other things, right? G, what else? Come on. Let's brainstorm. What about the overall broader uh, concepts? Culture, right? What else? Religion. Religion, right? What else? We participate in certain um, speech situations. Mm -hmm. What else? Dialects. Yeah, dialects are what we discuss in 
you see geographical boundaries right identity or um, um, you may say um, identity right um, identity or you may say a uh, role and relationship between participants right which is kind of part of the previous point speech situations what else mm -hmm. maybe same thing ji same thing as the basic thing of apply mm socialization you want to say socialization right same thing there are a number of factors which may influence the way we use language right now if we say that language influences sorry society influences the way we use language or society influences our language use i think things are a bit you see further clear now right these are actually the social factors which influence our language use right these are the factors which influence the way we use language right let's briefly discuss and exemplify these various social factors right uh, in order to determine the ways in which society may influence the way we use language right uh, social class remember we all belong to social certain social classes right uh, will be while while uh, formally discussing language and social classes part of you see uh, a major portion of this syllabus will be discussing the theory proposed by peter trudgel some people call him peter trudgel both the pronunciations are pretty okay i personally feel okay with peter trudgel right anyways uh, social class remember in society we have got multiple social classes like uh, uh, the upper class right then we have got middle class which may further be divided into uh, upper middle class middle middle class and lower middle class and then we have got the lower working class right don't you think the language which is used by the upper class people is much different than the language which is used by the lower class people isn't it so of course it is it is a fact right like the the more we go to the upper class people right what happens their language becomes very much similar and identical to the standard variety of a language right on the other hand the more we go towards the you see lower class people uh, the the number of variations between the standard variety and the language which they use do do the the number of uh, uh, you see variations increases actually there are uh, uh, more and more differences variations between the stand, standard language standard variety sorry and the variety which is used by the lower class people right uh, i'll give in uh, i'll give a, a few examples of the um, english to pashto borrowed words right though we may have a number of examples in uh, in the pashto uh, native language as well but since we are scholars of uh, uh, english linguistics that is why i'm i'm giving you examples from english to pashto borrowed words right look at the word transformer for example how do the upper class people pronounce this in the pashto language they they say let's suppose zamung da male transformer kharab de right hamare male ka transformer kharab hai but lower class people usually say how, how do they pronounce this can, can, can you pronounce that transformer kharab de right transformer yes like this is the way they remember there there is nothing wrong with that right zuban e galat nahi hoti zuban e mukhtalif hoti just as people are not different people are not wrong rather they are different same as the case of languages as well right so 
uh, in terms of pronunciation, in terms of lexical items, in terms of grammatical structures, the language is, you see, far different, I mean, language of the lower class people is far different than the, language, the standard variety of a language. Like, these words are now permanent part of the Pashto language, right? The Pashto language is about these words from English, remember, right? Uh, they, they make semantic generalizations, right? Uh, for example, look at the word machine, right? Uh, lower class, uh, oh, sorry, upper class people, they, they, they say, I need a shaving machine, right? Uh, shaving machine. Uh, they say, um, I, I need a washing machine, right? Uh, saving machine, multiple term, uh, terms they use. But the lower class people, they use, you see, uh, only the word machine to refer to a number of things. Like they, they say, Mapa machine ki jame uvenzele, right? Mapa machine shave boku. Ma uh, machine kaple wogandale, right? And whenever there is some conflict in Pashtun society or when Pakistan wins the match, what do they usually say? They say, Over Sharawal is a Maga machine. Isn't it the case? Uh, yes, I mean, sir, they, sir, they, they, sir. they refer to AK 47 using the very yes. same term, machine, right? It means that. Yes, yes right? It means that there are certain deficiencies in their language, right? And the, those deficiencies actually make their variety different from the standard variety of the language with which they are using, remember, right? So social class is one of the factors which may influence our language use, right? Social factor, social class is one of the social factors which may influence the way we use language, remember, right? Moving to gender, uh, while discussing uh, language and gender, um, we will be discussing, inshallah, uh, we will be discussing in detail a number of theories regarding language and gender, uh, particularly the, uh, the dominant theory by, proposed by, you see, Fishman, uh, the deficit theory by uh, Ruben Lakoff, the, uh, the difference theory by Deborah Tannen, some other theories, a few other theories, such as the one proposed by Deborah Jones and you see uh, Jennifer Coates, right? Uh, by Peter Frenzel as well, he's proposed a theory uh, regarding the pronunciation of the final good sound and words ending with ing, right? So these are, there, there are a number of theories we'll be discussing in detail. But you see, the language of male members of society is different from the language of the female members of society, right? Because, uh, uh, why is it so? Uh, theorists and practitioners in the field of, you see, language and gender studies uh, uh, find that uh, male members have got higher linguistic freedom, linguistic freedom, right, is com compared to the female members of society. How? Hey, look at male members. Uh, if uh, let's suppose any four or five students of your class go to the university town, right? Uh, while going to hostel or going home from the campus, and they you see in the main town they start ta talking and laughing loudly in front of the public. They may receive remarks from the passing by people, remarks such as "Oh, look at the university guys, they are enjoying their day." But what about the female members? If they start talking and laughing loud in public, we cannot even imagine the harsh remarks they will receive from the passing by people, right? It means that in in in, in such societies, male members have got higher linguistic freedom as compared to female members of the society, unfortunately, right? Um, the theorists suggest that, uh, well, so such as you see this, uh, the, the name I mentioned a short while ago, uh, Robin Lakoff, even uh, Deborah Tannen, right? Um, um, Forgetting of uh, uh, the fish, fishman, fishman as well, they believe that uh, the you see vocabulary items used by male members of society are primarily related to sports, politics, education, and these things. While the vocabulary items used by female members of society are primarily related to household activities and domestic chores, right? Uh, anyways, we may disagree with these theories as well by conducting proper research studies, which you will be doing, right? You will be working on your research projects. You may apply these theories on multiple texts, right? Real life language, uh, you use uh, language use in real life situations. 
and we may completely nullify these theories. But sweeping comments must not be there. Remember, we, we have to conduct proper research studies in order to uh, approve or disapprove or improve these theories, remember, right? So language and gender, uh, sorry, gender is another social factor which may influence the way we use language. Is this clear so far? Yes, sir. All right. <sighs> Moving to age, again, uh, we are, you see, social actors, we live in society, and in society, we meet and greet people of different ages, right? Um, we have got young children, then there are uh, youngsters in society, and then there are, you see, uh, elder members of society, right? And the way children use language is, you see, much different than the language which is used by the respected elderly members of society, right? Uh, let, let me uh, make you people listen to some audios sent by my little niece right ahuria kashif i hope you can hear her voice can you hear this Right, so what I want to say is that the language which is, which is, you see, or the way children speak language is different from the, the way elder, elder, friendly, elder members of the society use language. Remember, it's not only in terms of pronunciation, right? Children primarily, they, they are concerned with toys and foods and braces and these things, right? Uh, so the vocabulary items which are, you see, included in the language which they use, those vocabulary items are primarily related to uh, toys and, you see, braces. And these, these you see, all the conversations and, and things required by young children. On the other hand, if, if you look at the language used by the youngsters of society, so mostly related to nowadays modern technology, sports, politics, and education, right? And then finally, the language of the elder members of society, uh, it, it consists that that language consists of vocabulary items related to uh, uh, social issues, social problems, domestic problems, right? Children and you see things related to family, right? Multiple such other things, right? So age is also a very influential social factor which may influence the way we use language, right? Moving to profession, uh, people in society hold different profession, they belong to different fields, right? If, if you look at doctors, for example, if there are two or three doctors talking to one another regarding a patient who has got a very severe disease, for example, right? In the English language, if, 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 we, we, we do understand English, I mean you and I, right? We are scholars of lingu English linguistics, but you see the vocabulary items which they will be using, they will be definitely using uh, field specific terminology, right? Which which is uh, quite uh, you may say alien to to uh, laymen and to, to ordinary people. So we, we we do understand language, but the language which they speak, right? I mean the the terminology which they use while talking to one other. I mean the doctors, right? That is not intelligible to to, to common people to ordinary people, right? So uh, in the same way, look at the the language used by teachers, right? The language used by uh, sportsmen, right? Uh, Look at, among teachers, look at teachers of linguistics and literature. Sir Kasim is teaching you uh, some subject of, of literature and Sir Arfani as well, if I'm not wrong, right? The language which they are using, the terminology which they're using, it may be completely different than the terminology which I'm using right now, teaching you sociolinguistics. In the same way, if a teacher is teaching you psycholinguistics or some other subject or phonetics or phonology, for example, so the terminology again will be field-specific terminology, right? So we have got the concept of jargon, uh, which, which deals with such sort of, you see, field-specific terminology, which is not intelligible to, to, to ordinary people, right? So, profession is also a social factor which may influence the way we use language in society. 
Is this clear so far? Right. G, please. Sir, are these uh, filter uh, like influence uh, spoken language as well as the written language? Uh, we we are dealing with a spoken language because spoken language is a natural language, right? And in oh. sociolinguistics, remember our major focus is on spoken language, the spoken discourse, oh, right? Okay. Though we may, we may analyze written discourses as well, right? Um, like discourses, discourses used in newspapers, that is also language in use. That is also language in use, right? But uh, when we talk about these the, the sort of variations, phonological variations particularly, so then we take spoken language into consideration. Otherwise, remember, we do take a written language also into consideration in sociolinguistics, right? People who conduct diachronic studies or even diachronic studies uh, particularly for language change and you see language decay, language change or borrowing in such sort of you see uh, um, uh, theories are there, then written language is also taken into consideration, right? Sir, uh, one more question. Uh, here in this subject, uh, are we dealing with the dialects too? Of course we are dealing with dialects. I'm coming to dialects and we will be the next point, right? right this one. Geographical okay, boundaries, so. right? Okay, so. okay. It's all about varieties. Varieties of language on the basis of gender, on the basis of uh, you see social class. The variety of language on the basis of age, on the basis of profession, and then on the basis of geographical boundaries. The all the variety of language on the basis of culture, on the basis of speech situation, right? We we have got multiple varieties of language, right? Okay. Coming to geographical boundaries, uh, remember geographical boundary is also a social factor, right? We live in certain geographical boundaries, right? For example, if we look at the, the English language, so we have got the British English and we have got the, the American English right spoken in the united states of america and the british uh, british english spoken in the great britain right uh, uk now see these two areas are distinguished by their geography right because they are two different places right and due to these geographical differences there are linguistic differences as, as well linguistic variations but these variations are of three types remember the first one is lexical variations right i mean uh, variations or differences of vocabulary items right uh, then we have got let me move this to the next page Right. Then there are uh, phonological variations. Right. And the last one is what we call syntactic variations, or you may generally say grammatical variations. We use the word syntactic variations. Right. Uh, the, the term may be uh, kind of new to you people that is why I'm not using a field specific terminology today. I'm trying to find it uh, in today's class only, remember. See the British English and the American English. Look at lexical variations. In one of the dialects, they say plate, in the other dialect, they say apartment. Right? Same as the case with biscuits and cookies, and there are hundreds of such differences. So we will be discussing these differences in detail, remember. Right? Uh, then there are phonological variations like uh, the British people, for example, uh, look at the word ball. Britishers say ball while Americans pronounce it as ball, O and A, right? Uh, in the trapezium, um, I mean diagram of the vowel sounds, um, I hope you, you remember vowel number 5 and vowel number 6, right? So Britishers use vowel number 5. Sorry, one number six, while Americans use one number five, right? A simple ah sound. Americans say ball, while Britishers say ball, right? Same as the case with the word call. Britishers say call, and I'm going to call you, while Americans say I'm, I'm going to call you, call, right? Uh, the word boss and boss. Again, so the different, uh, look, look at this one, uh, 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 it may be a bit more easily understandable one. 
uh, the fennel r sound, right? Britishers, the Britishers omit the fennel r sound and they say teacher, teacher, right? But Americans say teacher. They do pronounce the fennel r sound, the American speakers of, of English language, right? Teacher. So these are phonological variations. Then there are grammatical or syntactic variations as well, like uh, like in, in one of the dialects, they, they use the past simple tense, but in the other dialect, they use the, uh, you see, uh, present perfect tense. Like, uh, I attended the lecture, and I have attended the lecture. There are a number of other syntactic variations as well, right? Coming to the Pashto language now, uh, our mother tongue, right? Remember, there are two main dialects in the Pashto language. How many? Dialects. And what are they? And they said the basic dialect is soft and hard. Oh, very good. You the soft dialect and huh? hard? Yes. The soft dialect is also called uh, Kandahari, Kandahari is uh, right, the Kandahari dialect, while the hard dialect is called the Yusuf Zir dialect, right? Yusuf Zir dialect. Now, see, um, people who live in Pakistan, people who live in Karak, Banu, like Marwat, Waziristan, and those areas, right? Uh, they, they use this uh, soft dialect of the Pashto language. While people uh, living in Mardan, Peshawar, Jarasadda, Sawaz, Shangla, Deer, Malakan, right? They use the hard dialect of the Pashto language, the Yusufi dialect, right? Like the uh, um, people of the soft dialect, they pronounce the word Khpa is Psha. Right, Zama Pshahokshwa. When well, people of the well, speakers of the hard dialect say Zama Pshahokshwa. Right? Da Pashtunde, Da Pashtunde. These are only phonological differences, but there are, there are, you see, lexical differences as well. Right? Then remember, inside, uh, further inside the hard dialect, there are sub varieties. Sub varieties are there, right? And same as the case with the soft dialect as well. Uh, like, People who belong to Temargara, right? When, when they want to tell somebody to, you see, cut oranges. So they, they uh, and people of uh, Sawath, then you see Peshawar, Mardan, Malakan, right? Uh, the, the, they say, they say, multi katka or multi preka. Right? Malte Katka or Malte Preka, isn't it so? Yes, sir. Right. But in Temargara, what people say, I have heard Saribad saying it for a number of times. Saribad, people who live, uh, who live in their region, they say Malte Madika. Break the apples or break the oranges, right? So, like, it's kind of a strange thing for us because. Uh, Oranges and apples, they may not be broken down, they, they are rather cut down, right? But this is the way they, they use their language. What I want to say is that there are further sub-variations as well. Look at the word kite, for example. In Kabi, I mean, in the hard dialect of the Pashto language, in Mardan, they call it, uh, they, they call it Kang, Kang Kawak, right? And sometimes Dal, right? People in District Malakan call it Patang and Bajawa, right? Then people in Temargara in the upper and lower deer, they, they call it Badiwa, I think. Right? So they, they are multiple names. I mean, lexical variations. Like, sorry, phonological variations used for the very same thing. This is an example of phonological variation, and this one is an example of multi but this is an example of, you see, uh, lexical variations. You see? So, Geographical boundary is again a very influential factor because it influences the way we use language, right? People who live in Charsadda, uh, the way they use language is different from the language spoken by the people living in Karak, right? Uh, in the same way, I am talking about the Pashto language, remember, right? Then people living in Karak speak differently than the language, uh, the, the, than the people who live in, uh, you see, uh, Lucky Marwat. Right? Uh, like in Marwat, people, they say the Chokte, right? Uh, people of Karak, Sawat, in all these areas, they say the Sokte, right? Who is he? Uh, 
but people who live in uh, you see lucky marwal they say uh, the joke thing right uh, so this is how you see ling uh, linguistic variations exist across boundaries right is this clear so far Yes, sir. As I said yes, sir. Uh, earlier, let me repeat for the last time. Today we are discussing these things in very general terms, like the the, the term used for the these sort of you see dialectical variations is called regional dialect or dialect, right? Uh, for social class, we have got the term social dialect. Let me show you here. Uh, you see, we have got regional dialects. Right, we have got dialect, socialect, a dialect, we have got diglossia, register, jargon. Right, we have got multiple names, multiple terms for, for but technical terms. You see, for all these ling linguistic variations uh, caused by certain uh, so social factors. But as I said, our focus today is to uh, just to understand what this subject is all about in very general terminology right so they so that you you, you people may understand the very know-how of this subject right in the coming class inshallah we will we'll talk about these very issues and these very uh, uh, concepts using technical terminology related to the field of sociolinguistics remember uh, coming to uh, uh, if it is clear so far let's move ahead please is this clear Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Moving to language contact, remember when two languages or when two language speech communities come into contact with each other, what happens? Uh, people of uh, those two communities, they, they you see, start meeting and greeting one other and they start interacting with one other. And as a result, a number of factors may take place, right? Specifically, specifically, we have got like we, we, we may say that uh, a, a society may become bilingual a society may become bilingual or it may become you may say plurilingual when there are multiple languages spoken in a society right uh, plurilingual or plurilingualism right there is a, a recent term and uh, sorry uh, this is multilingualism multilingualism uh, and the recent term the modern term is pluri Lingualism, right? Which refers to both together, plural bilingualism and multilingualism. So a society may become plurilingual, like people may start using uh, two or three languages at the same time, right? Like look at the Pashtun society; it is almost plurilingual. Look at Peshawar, a highly plurilingual society where people speak Urdu and Pashto primarily, and some people use you see Hindko, Urdu and Pashto. Some others use. Urdu and Chatrali, you see, because that is a multilingual, a highly multilingual society. And then people become monolingual, sorry, bilingual and multilinguals, right? Uh, then we'll, we'll go into the details of this topic, inshallah, in the future, where we talk about certain neurological aspects of this, this, this concept, uh, bilingualism, like what goes on in the mind of individual transition is going on, inhibition, right? Uh, m m multiple uh, uh, cognitive activities uh, take place in the mind of individual, rather in the brain of even the, the physical aspect, neurological aspects are also there, right? Neurological ex explanations to multilingualism, bilingualism, psycholinguistic ex explanations to the, the, these terms and concepts, right? We'll be discussing them in detail, but uh, you see, bilingualism simply means the phenomenon when a society or a person becomes. Uh, able to, you see, use two languages uh, uh, in a single speech situation. That is what we call bilingualism, and the person is called bilingual or multilingual, right? Uh, so, uh, and, and as a result of bilingualism, what happens, remember, two things uh, take place. The first one is code switching, because when people are proficient in both the languages, right they will code switch between the two languages right then there is code switching and code mixing which are kind of different things uh, i'm sorry i started using technical terminology to the, again but you see people switch from one language to another and they switch back and forth from one language to another sometimes they like just as you see we pashtun speakers while speaking pushtu we use words uh, from the English language and from the Urdu language. Similarly, Urdu speakers use words from the Urdu English language, right? This is what we call switching of codes, switching of languages, right? And then there is borrowing. 
The second phenomenon is called borrowing, where one language borrows words from another language, like our, 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 our language takes over words from another language and makes them, you see, part of its own. Like uh, the word laptop, for example, has been borrowed from it is being taken over from English into Pashto and it is it is now a permanent part of the Pashto language remember right so uh, these are you see again like uh, initially uh, there, there there must have been a time in the past where Pashto used to be very pure language but nowadays since Pashto has come into contact with the English language so this this Pashto English contact has brought a number of changes in the Pashto language remember Right, like uh, a number of words uh, are there which exist in the Pashto language, but those words have been taken from the English language. So this is how a language may change with the basis of time if it comes into contact with another language, right? And when it comes into contact with another language and a society becomes bilingual or multilingual, what happens? Uh, people start using multiple languages in a single speech situation, remember? Right, so these are actually you, you see this is how language contact or contact between two or more two or more languages influence the way we use language and there may be permanent changes as well which which may be caused by this language contact right uh, so language contact is again another influential factor which may influence the way we use language clear so far yes sir. any confusion? So, so, can you say to multilingual hybridization or mixing of two languages? Yeah, mixing of two languages, exactly. I mean, two languages are mixed together, but this mixing up is of two types. One, one is a temporary one, which is called code switching, another is borrowing, right? Where a word uh, or lexical item becomes a permanent part of another language, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Moving to another, uh, another social factor, which is race or ethnicity. Uh, remember, people belong to different races, right? Like, if you look at the English language, we have got the African American English, abbreviated as AAE, right? African American English. If you look at the African American uh, Amer African American English, it is far different than the standard. American English language, right? Uh, how, uh, for example, the African American people, why, if they want to say uh, he or she is going to school or he or she is going to do something, right? So they omit this auxiliary verb and they say uh, he going to do this, he going to do this. Right, a number of other such shorter forms, or you may say substandard, we may not call them substandard forms, right? But still, like their language is in one way or another deficient and it's different than the standard American English, right? Uh, uh, it means that such uh, the race which a person belongs to also influences the language which the person uses, right? If you look at a uh, Pashtun society, right? I, I personally uh, mark my words, I personally do not believe in any, you see, race, ethnicity, and nationality, these the sort of things. But, you see, uh, there are certain races in Pashtun society, like we, 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 we have got uh, Yusuf Zay, right? Uh, Khan Kuri, and you see a number of other races, more than 36, I think. Right? So the language which is used by Yusuf Z people is different from the language which is used by Khan Kuri and from, you see, any other uh, race. Right? So race or ethnicity, the ethnic group we belong to, uh, also influences the way we use language. Right? Moving to culture, which is a very broad term and it, it, it uh, encompasses a number of, you see, social factors, it embeds in itself, in itself a, number of, uh, a number of social factors. Uh, if you look at Pashtun culture, for example, here when a person wants to talk to uh, his parents, for example, or any other elder, family, um, elder member of the family, so uh, a person has to use very polite and formal language. Right, uh, making use of a number of model auxiliaries. Uh, in the English culture, people talk to their, you see, 
elder members of the society quite informally and quite uh, you may say impolitely right without uh, any hesitation without without any you see hesitation markers or model auxiliaries right uh, they even they, they may even refer to their teachers by their name uh, mr suleiman may i come to the class right hello mr suleiman this is how you see they refer to their teachers uh, i'm not saying that that is something bad and ours is something good right or better than theirs right that is another issue right that is that that is another issue we're just stating the facts remember uh look at question society again here we have got these kinship terms which is also part of your syllabus right uh, i mean terms which we used to refer to our family members right in society like when a person is usually above 20 we uh, refer to them is you see by, by using their nicknames Hanji, Mamaji, Mamujan, and you see Turdada, Spindada, these words, right? Uh, and for the female members, we, we have bought Hani Gulen, Rani Gulen, you see Chani Gulen, these words. But in the Western culture, you will hardly see such, such kinship terms, remember. Uh, here, if you want to invite somebody or to, uh, you see, ask a guest to have some more, to take some more food, so you see we, we we keep on repeating the very same thing right uh, in the western culture you will hardly see such things right uh, there is a culture in, the, in papua new guinea right um i'm forgetting the name of the exact culture but there when they want to invite somebody or to ask somebody for a cup of coffee or tea or some cold drink or whatever so uh, there is a strange, you see, um, uh, kind of practice there. Uh, like uh, they, f f when you want, if, for example, if you are part of that culture and you want to ask somebody to have a cup of tea, you will first say, uh, would you like to have a cup of coffee? And then you will have to wait for at least four or five minutes in order to let the person think, right? After, four, after remaining silent for four or five minutes, you will say again, yes or no and the person may either say or yes then right so don't you think the, there are cultural differences uh, look at the punjabi people uh, they socialize their children uh, uh, kind of you may say in a better way than we people do so their children are very bold and while talking to people to strange people right uh, the, their language is very different. Uh, on the other hand, when we Pashtun people go to Punjab and we start speaking, uh, we start start speaking to people of other communities. We are a bit hesitant. We are not that much bold. Why? Because it because of the, the this cultural cul cultural uh, you see diff differences, right? And uh, here uh, we we may talk about socialization as well. Socialization is also a part of a part of culture. You may say, right? Uh, the way people get socialized influences the way they speak, the way they use language. As I uh, uh, said, that you see Pashtun people, they are a bit hesitant, while Punjabi people, they are very bold and confident. Why? It's because of uh, the, that thing. I mean, because of their socialization, the way they get socialized. Socialization simply means, uh, let's not get confused regarding this term, uh, it simply means uh, the way a person you see uh, is brought up and the person is made a fully competent member of a society, of a community, right? That that process is like we, we have been through socialization and still we are, we are uh, this process is in vogue, right? Still this process is going on, right? Uh, so uh, culture, uh, again moving to religion, look at, um, uh, for example, um, Muslim English speaker, the way if, if that person is speaking, he'll be uh, time and again using words such as mashallah, subhanallah, jazakallah, uh, God, God forbid, alhamdulillah, right, bismillah. Uh, on the other hand, people who belong to, uh, a, a person who belongs to a Hindu community, the Hindu religion, Hinduism, that person will definitely be using terminology from his or her own language right a religion sorry uh, related to uh, peculiar to their own religion uh, a, a, a christian may be using words such as jesus christ and you see uh, those sort of words right so religion or the language the religion which you belong to may also influence our language use right uh, speech situations 
You people are right here, you are, you, you are in this cloud. This is a speech situation, remember, a speech event, right? Uh, the language which you people are using is quite formal, sophisticated and polite. But when you people, you see, if, for example, this here of your class or anyone else makes of a conference phone call to up to four or five uh, fellows of the class, right? Your language may not be that much polite then. You may not be using... Um, you see uh, these many model auxiliaries, right? You may be, you may not be waiting for speech tons for such a long time as you people are doing right now, right? So speech situation, of, if, the, if there is a seminar going on, right, in the campus, for example, so usually English or Urdu is used, right? But when there is a time for lunch, then all the people, including the chief guests and you see the keynote speakers, they also start speaking the Pashto language if they belong to KP, right? Uh, so, uh, because the situation changes, so, so does the language. It means situation may also influence the way we use language, right? Uh, moving to the last one, uh, identity or role or relationship between participants, right? Um, Look at Saribath, for example, we have been together, we have been very close friends since 2016. So, uh, uh, when when I am in a class, if you remember, in the previous semester, I think, or in uh, the semester before the previous one, when Saribath Sab was teaching you some, some, some topic, I entered the class, I before entering the class, sorry, I first knocked at the door and I said, Sir, I may I talk to you for a minute if you don't mind, please, right? Because he, there he was my colleague and we were in front of our students, right? But when the situation changed, when we start moving towards our dwelling, I mean towards uh, the place we are living in, right? So the language when, which we were using then was completely different than the language which I was using when I was talking to him inside the class, right? So situation, when the situation changes, so does the language, remember, right? Here we have got diagnostic situations, we will we, we, we'll discuss in the coming class, inshallah, in technical terms, technical terminology, like uh, people in Punjabi society, uh, they, they have got two varieties, a high variety and a low variety, right? For official gatherings, they use the Urdu language, and for their day-to-day -day colloquial, colloquial conversations, right, uh, casual conversations on... Uh, Casual occasions, they use the Punjab, the Punjabi language. Then, so see when the situation changes, so does the language, right? Uh, coming, coming to identity, identity our role, role in the relationship between participants, right? Uh, by this I mean, uh, look at someone so for example, right? Someone so when uh, his brother got admission at normal um, two semesters ago. So, inside the class, their role in a relationship was that of a teacher and a student, right? So, they used to speak the English language or Urdu, and their language was, a ling the language which they was using when talking to each other was quite formal and polite and sophisticated. Uh, uh, his brother used to say, uh, Sir, may I ask a question? Sir, may I ask a question, please? Right? But Inside the when when they when when they would get back to their home and the role in relationship would change of course right they would no, no longer be students and teacher a student and a teacher rather than brothers so the language which they would use uh, it would become a little different then right so role and relationship right it also influences the way we use the role in relationship between speech participants, remember. So it also influences the way we use the language, right? These are all the social factors which may influence the way we use language. Coming back to our basic question in the definition of sociolinguistics, the general definition, right? Uh, sociolinguistics is the study of language in relation to society. Uh, such sort of relationship may be of two types. The first one is language influences society and society influences language. In today's lecture, we uh, focused on the very first one, society influences language, right? And we posed a question, if you remember, in what ways does society influence language or how does uh, society influence language uh, uh, how does society influence the, uh, the language we use, right? So this was the question, uh, the question we posed at the beginning of the lecture. I believe that you people are in a position now, uh, you are in the position to provide a satisfactory answer to this question, aren't you?
right to determine and to be in the position to determine the influence of society on language right we may summarize okay, so all objectives of this subject and to this one single statement we will will definitely uh, discuss well you see objectives in the coming classes i said we'll be using certain technical terminology in the coming class inshallah because now you people are in the position that you can easily understand these notions right tomorrow i mean in the coming class inshallah we'll we will just you see discuss these very concepts which we just discussed today we'll just discuss them using technical terminologies peculiar to this subject social linguistics right These are the objectives okay, we will be discussing in the coming class, inshallah. Uh, I, I, uh, though I, uh, I was told to, you see, allocate only one lecture to discussing the course and setting the plan for the entire syllabus. But um, I, I want you people to have a very strong background of this subject, right? That is why I uh, delivered a lecture on, you see, this subject generally. And in the coming class, inshallah, we'll, we'll have another lecture on, regarding the syllabus in which we'll discuss the entire syllabus of social linguistics as well. So that we may be ready for the entire course throughout the semester. Then. Right? And there should be no confusion inshallah. at all. Inshallah. All right? Do you people have any other question or anything you want to add to the discussion? ओके सर ओके 